Welcome everyone to the last section here in Math 234. This is section number nine of chapter 16. The divergence theorem is what we're talking about here. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you the statement of the divergence theorem, and then we're gonna get a little bit of practice, but we're gonna get a lot more practice, of course, in class, and we have a, a two days of this sort of deal. So, okay, I wanna recall from 16.5, right, that there was this alternate form of Green's theorem. Right? And so the alternate form went like this, that if you do a line integral of f dot n, right? so this is now not the unit tangent vector, but the unit normal vector, that somehow we can actually simplify this line integral into a surface, not, not into a surface integral quite yet, but into a double integral over, well, technically a region or a surface in the xy plane. And so again, this is all done in just two dimensions, right? We only had X's and Y's. Our vector fields only had P's and Q's, right? So this was a, a statement in just two dimensions, X's and Y's. We can upgrade this, however, to a statement in three dimensions, right? And so the statement in three dimensions, kind of if you think about the natural upgrades here, if you're in three dimensions, um, well, maybe instead of you know, doing a normal vector on a line, it would be a normal vector of a surface. Right? which means maybe that this shouldn't be a line integral anymore, but it should be a surface integral. So therefore, we're going to have the surface integral of f dot n d with a capital S here, where n is the unit normal vector of the surface, and f is now a vector field with p's, q's, and r's. Right? It's a three-dimensional vector field. Right? It has three components to it. This is going to be equal to... And while the divergence right, makes sense in both two dimensions and three dimensions, right? and primarily this came up in three dimensions, that's you know, what we were talking about in 16.5. So if we wanted to do a three-dimensional component, well, instead of a region D right, that's trapped in the XY plane, let's go ahead and do a region E right, that's in space, right? XYs and Zs, and then we can talk about the divergence of F and then this is going to be not dA anymore, but dV, right? Because again, this is a triple integral with some volume here. All right. And so just like in Green's theorem, right, in this case with this alternate one, I didn't go ahead and write down all the conditions, but there are a bunch of conditions, right? Where does this C come from? Where does this D come from, right? When does this hold true, right? Likewise, in the divergence theorem, there are, theorem, there are a lot of uh, kind of things that we need, a bunch of conditions that if the, if the conditions aren't true, then this will not be true. So E should be a simple solid region. S should be the boundary of the surface, uh, boundary surface of E, excuse me. So yes, E needs to be a nice region in space, and then S needs to be the boundary surface. Another way to say it is S should be closed, right? Well, we should have a positive or outward orientation, right? This N right here needs to have an orientation. Should we choose the inward or the outward one? Well, we're going to choose outward. And then F should be a vector field that's relatively nice, right? Which means that its component functions should have continuous partial derivatives on an open region that contains E, right? Because the divergence here, this div, right? This means that we're going to need to calculate out the derivatives of, you know, each one of these components. Okay. So again, the main condition here is really that S needs to be closed. So S needs to be closed. Again, it needs to be the boundary surface of some three-dimensional region E. Okay, so that is the statement of the divergence theorem. And so I have a problem for us to go ahead and practice on. This was a final exam problem back in 2001. And of course, I mean, that 2001, that was a long time ago, but it's still, you know, just as good of a problem today as it was back then. So let's go ahead and set this up. Uh, notice that it says, do not evaluate the integral. We just want to go ahead and set up uh, a triple integral. All right, so I recommend that you pause the video, try to get as far as you can on this one, and then go ahead and unpause, and I'll spoil the surprise. But again, try to apply divergence theorem to this problem, right? It even specifies it was extra nice, right? Apply divergence theorem. Okay. So let's get to it. The first thing, right, we have this nice surface integral, and our goal is to use the divergence theorem to write the surface integral as a triple integral. So notice what you're trading in here in divergence theorem is a surface integral for a triple integral. Okay, so we have the surface integral of f dot ds. Well, we have to remember here that f dot ds with this bold s, right, this is notation. This notation means we're doing f 
dot n ds, right? And so this f dot n ds, that's what's given to us in the divergence theorem. But if you'd like to, you write, you, you know, again, you can use the notation f dot ds with a bold s here. So this is going to be equal to the triple integral of the divergence of f dv. So the triple integral of the divergence of f. So I'm going to go ahead and put my f here. So f in this case is x squared, y squared, z squared. So it's the divergence of this vector field and then dv. Okay, so with the setup here, the divergence is going to be 2x plus 2y plus 2z. And that's the thing that we would be integrating, dv. Now this says that we're going to set up the triple integral, but we should not evaluate the triple integral. So we're almost done here. The only thing that we need left is the bounds of this triple integral. So I'm going to go ahead and set up the bounds for this thing. 2x, 2y, 2z, and I'm going to go ahead and start off with dz, dy, dx. Right? That's probably our favorite order of integration to start off with. Okay, now we actually have to go back and look at E, right? So E is the solid region in the first octant that lies beneath the plane. So we have the nice plane there uh, and consists, uh, oh, sorry, in the first octant, yes. So S would consist of the four triangles. So let's go ahead and try to sketch this thing and see what it looks like. So just the first octant here. So I'm going to have maybe X, Y, and Z. And so let's go ahead, if I was to maybe plug in, uh, for instance, zero for x's and y's, zeros for x's and y's, this would give me that z would be half, have to equal three, right? So z would equal three in this case, one, two, three, okay? If I was to go ahead and plug in zeros for maybe, let's do uh, x and z, right? So these are gone, then y would have to equal two. And if I was to plug in zeros for y's and for z's, then x would have to equal 3. Remember, this already says that it's a plane, right? In order to sketch a plane, we just need three points. So now I'm already set to go ahead and sketch this plane, thanks to these three points right here. So it looks something like this. And again, E is the region that's bounded by this plane that's in the first octant. So it's all of the stuff that kind of lies underneath this plane as well. So all of this, right, this is our region E. And so if I was thinking about integrating, right, and maybe doing the Z direction first, so I'm traveling upward, I would enter in through this bottom surface right here. So that's going to be in the X, Y plane. That would be Z equals zero. And I would exit through this nice uh, slanted plane, right? This green thing that I have shaded here. And that's just gonna be our plane back here, maybe solved for Z. So if I go ahead and solve this for Z, I would have two Z is equal to six minus two X minus three Y. So that's gonna give me Z is equal to three minus X minus three halves Y. So that's how I'll be exiting through this region, right? So it's going to be 3 minus x minus 3 halves y. And now if I was to go ahead and smash, right, so that there were no more z's in the world and all that were left were x's and y's, we'd have something like this, right? All the residue would fall down here. And so let's go ahead and maybe draw the equivalent in the xy plane. So xy plane. Here x was 3 and y was two. So I can go ahead and maybe draw this. X was three, y was two. We had this nice line, and again, kind of once we smashed, the region kind of came down here. All right, so something like this. And now if I was to, going to integrate with respect to y next, so I'm traveling in this y direction, I would enter in through the x-axis, or y equals zero, and I would exit through, well, this line right here. And we can take a second to figure out what that line's equation should be. So, right, we're going to have y equals mx plus b. So, first of all, I see that the intercept, that b value, is going to be 2. So, let me go ahead and do plus 2. And then I need to figure out what the slope is. Well, notice for a run of 3, I do a rise of 2. So, if I'm doing rise over run, 
we, again, we have a rise of negative 2 for a run of 3. Right? So when I do a run of 3, we go down 2. So this is going to be negative 2 thirds x plus 2. So that's our y value that we exit out of. That's the equation of this line here. So we can do negative 2 thirds x plus 2. Ooh, those are getting a little bit crammed together here. There, that's a little bit better. And if we were to smash one more time, so if there were no more y's in the world and all that were left with x's, right, we would go ahead and smash and we'd have something like this, and x would range between 0 and 3. 0 and 3. And this is our complete setup using the divergence theorem. So now we have our triple integral. Again, we're not going to evaluate this. We just set up a triple integral that would yield the same result as that surface integral. Right? And that surface integral, again, it had four pieces. We had, there's four pieces to that uh, surface, right? So there's the part in the xy plane, the yz plane, the xz plane, and then also the slanted bit. So S consists of these four triangles. You would not want to have to calculate out the surface integral over these four things, right? That would be a huge pain. There's different normal vectors, all of that sort of stuff. So this would be much, much faster. Luckily, even in this problem, right, they just want the setup not to evaluate at all. All right, so that is how we can apply the divergence theorem. That problem is done. We'll have a lot more for you guys in class. I'll see you then.